Okay, so now we're going to get a little more complex. We are going to take advantage of the naturalness of our natural language. Um, and so let's take a look at the sample code. Again, um, this is in HTTPS www.pgfree.com slash lectures slash 05 full dot text dot SQL. And you can download that and then um, let's go search for stop words. So here we go. So the idea is, is we're going to move everything to lowercase and we're going to have a set of stop words that are meaning free like and and for and whatever. So let me go ahead and uh, drop docs with a cascade option and then uh, create the docs. I'm, this the structure is the same. We could probably just delete the um, uh, delete the rows from it, but we'll recreate it just for yucks. Um, come back. And then we're going to insert some records. insert the records in. So we got three records inserted, the same ones that we've been playing with. And um, so, you know, this, this same thing that we've done here, um, we can break the columns into, you know, one row per word, press a primary key with the, the select distinct, with the unnest and string to array of the doc, the doc column. But you see that some of these are uppercase and some of these are lowercase, and we want to kind of eliminate the uppercase and lowercase. And so what we're going to do is the only change we're going to make is we're going to we're going to take the string to array and we're going to convert the document to lowercase before we split it. And that's all we've changed. So we're going to lowercase it all. So we're going to convert the doc column to lowercase before we split it. And now you see all those keywords are lowercase. That already is going to make our lives a lot simpler. Okay, so we're going to create our docs gen, our docs gen table, which is the same. It's got a keyword and it's got a doc ID that's a foreign key pointing to docs ID. And now we're going to create our ta uh, table of stop words. So I'm just going to put one column in the stop words. It's a column called word. And then I'm going to insert into stop words is this an and we don't need too many stop words but you get the idea so if you can go google and stop words you'll find there are lots of lists of very extensive lists of stop words we're going to uh, <clears throat> we're going to keep it real simple because our text is really simple so now what we're going to do is we're going to basically have a where clause and so you can sort of see what's happening here is um, we're going to this is the creating of the inverted index and so we're going to add a WHERE clause to this thing we did before where the keyword is NOT IN and then a subselect of SELECT WORD FROM STOP WORDS. So we're going to split the documents into words, lower casing them, and then we are going to throw away the words that are in the STOP WORD list, and then we're just going to list them. So selecting distinct ID as keyword and from docs with an unnest and a string to array, and where they're not in the stop words. So you see that now that we've put that where clause of the stop words in, a lot of words went away. Let me see if I can edit it so that I just don't even have that where clause. So I do the same thing without the where clause. This was what we did in the previous example. Previous example, you see we had 22 rows, and if we do it with the stop words, we have 18 rows. And so all the rows have been thrown away. We've also lower cased it, and so that lower is in there and away we go. Now all we're going to do is take that same select distinct and we're going to insert that into our uh, inverted index just like we did before. So we're going to insert into docs gen and then the select distinct with the where clause so we end up with 18 rows 18 rows in the docs gen. And so we can do the same kind of a query. Now we do have to convert like lowercase. This query is the same as before. All we did is didn't put as many things in the stop words, okay? And so you can see something like, um, and do the same thing we did where you can do a multi-word query. But let me go to this next one uh, the, with a stop word query where I'm looking for a keyword of and, and now I'm, now I'm seeing no rows. Because in a sense, what we're doing is we're, we're going through the docs gen, looking up the keyword, and then we're joining into the docs into the docs uh, table from the docs gen 
And because the where clause doesn't find the keyword, because the keyword isn't even in the docsgen table. And so that so we never put the we never put a stop word in the docsgen. We did all the work of stop words as we constructed that table. Okay? So that's stop words. Now another important aspect of natural language is what's called stemming. And in stemming, we convert, we we transform certain words into their stems. And so we, in in this particular thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that teaching is is stemmed down to teach, and teach is is stemmed down to teach, and teach equals teach, right? So these are all words that we're gonna take that are sort of slightly more complicated or uh, you know flowery ways of the same concept. And so teaching and teach are the same concept. And so we map them from the words, you know, we could say instruct maps to teach even. But so what we're doing is we're stemming. So I'm going to insert a two tuples, right? I'm insert, uh, first I got to create the table, of the stem table with a word and a stem. So the word, the first column is the original word and the stem is kind of the reduced version of the word. And the idea is it works if multiple words map to the same stem. So let's go ahead and make that. So I've got two rows in my docs underscore stem table. <clears throat> and so we're going to uh, do the, the word extraction and we're going to move it into a subquery just, just, just to, to make it a little clear what's going on. We got this select ID keyword from subquery, select distinct, etc. And so there we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join that, right? I just wanted to show you that. And so when we select, so we've got this select distinct ID from keyword, right? That gives us the IDs and the keywords. The stop words have already been taken out. And by taking that as an as K, what that creates is something I can join on. And then I can, I can join with a, what's called a left join onto the stem table. As S just gives me a nice thing to say, I'm interested in the keyword in the gin table matching the word, which is the leftmost column. And so I can, it's probably just as easy to show you this because we're going to get three things. So, so what's cool about a left join, right? So I, I looked up all of these, these things, ID and keyword are from the docs gin. And then you see stem over here. If this was not a left join, it would only show me the rows where there was a match. So what I did was I looked up in the stemming table what the stem was for the word teaches, and I looked up in the stemming table what the, the stem was for the word teaching, and they're both teach. But the rest of them are blank because and and other and from and should, they didn't have stems. And that's just because I didn't make stems. But you can see this left join allows us to do a, a conditional lookup without losing all the data. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, in a sense, prefer the stem over the word. But and and fun and is and other and Python have no stems, so they're just, we're just going to use those words. Okay? So, so, you, so we, we're going to look this up if it's there, and if it's there, we're going to use it. We're going to look teach up. If it's there, we're going to use it. Okay? So let's take a look at how we do that. So this... <clears throat> So now instead of just selecting ID, keyword, and stem from the th two tables, I'm going to say select ID and then a case. Case when stem is not null, give me stem, else give me keyword. And as awesome gives it an alias. And then I'm going to also pull out the keyword and the stem. And the rest of this left join and all that, that's from the previous example. So. So, oops, yeah, there we go. So awesome is in effect a derived column from keyword and stem. When stem is not null, take the stem. So in this, in this line here, we're teaching line, I use the stem. In the line like stuff right above it, there is no stem, and so I use stuff. And so this is the way case when stem is not null, then stem else keyword. This is sort of if then else, but it's a it's a data flow based if then else. It's I love this. It's really a cool way. It's not like if do whatever. It's a case. It's like when this happens, choose this value. When this doesn't happen, 
and apply it to every row. Just like most things in SQL, there's an implied loop. Okay, so that's one way of preferring the stem over the keyword. Okay, and there's even a prettier way to do that, and it's using a function called coalescing. And the idea of coalescing is that it's a function that takes any number of parameters and it returns the first non-null parameter. So if I say select coalesce null null UMSI, now let me just grab them both. Let me grab them both and run them both just to show you how they work. So if you say select null null UMSI, it gives you new UMSI. If you say select coalesce UMSI null SQL, you get UMSI. It returns the first non-null value and ignores the rest of them. It will go through as many not null values, discarding them as you like, and then find a non-null value. So we can actually express in a, a bit more elegant way in this next query, select ID, coalesce, stem, and keyword. So what I'm basically saying here is coalesce, stem, keyword. The keyword's always going to be there, and stem might be there, but stem might be null because I did a left join on doc stem. So if the stem is there, I'm going to hit stem. If the stem is not there, I'm getting a null because the left join gives me a null in, in rows where there was no match. And so coalesce just sort of flattens that down, preferring the stem with a back fallback to the keyword. You can almost think of this as like a get in Python where you have a default value, but it's not. So this is a very, very pretty... Oops, what did I do there? Yeah, so this is a very pretty way. This coalesce is a prettier way of um, grabbing the index, basically. And so you'll notice that learning and uh, no teaching, teach shows up several places, and teach was never in our original thing because we used teaching and teach is and mapped them both to teach, which is their stem. So the idea now is we've got we can sort of go through and look up keywords with stems. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that select statement and we're going to insert it into docsgen. And so we're simply going to take this stemmed, we're going to make a reversed index of stemmed words. Not the original words, stemmed words. Stop words are gone. Um, yeah, I think in this, yeah. No, stop. Stop words are not gone. That's going to insert just the stemmed words. Um, now we're going to actually, I'd probably just, I should take that out. Really, it's most fun if we do the stop, doc, uh, stop words and the gin, uh, stop words and the stems. So I'll just delete from docs gin. And I'm going down to the one where I'm doing the stop words and the stems. Insert into docsgen, select ID coalesce stem keyword from this giant subselect. And this subselect has the where s dot keyword not in select word from stop words, subselect within a subselect, which that's going to throw away the stop words. And then we're going to take that whole thing as K, and then we're going to left join it into the stem. And then that is going to, and then we're going to coalesce the stem and the keyword together so that we'll end up inserting stemmed words. So this is stop words and stemmed words all in one glorious coalesced left join subselected magnificent awesomeness. So now if we say select star from, oops, from docs underscore gin. 10, we will see stemmed words, we will see stop words handled and stemmed words and sign off. We have docsgen has our inverted index, which is a pretty, pretty thing. Now, the key is when we're building a where clause, we, we, if we are looking for a word, we have to also look for the word or the stem of the word, and we have to prefer the stem of the word. So if we look at this select coalesce, and then we have two parameters. The first parameter is a whole subselect. I might remind you that subselects are inefficient, but we're data miners, so we're less concerned about efficiency and more concerned about awesomeness and really getting Ninja Warrior good at uh, SQL, which we're doing. So you can see this coalesce has two values, and one is a lookup 
to see if there is a stem for the word SQL, we're mapping into lowercase, and if we don't find a stem, fall back just to SQL. So we've also we've got the stemming here and we got the stemming and the going to lowercase all happening. And so that particular one had no stem. So SQL has no stem. But if I do the same thing with teacher, you see that I get the stem. So coalesce, select stem from docs where word to lower equals teaching, and then fall back to lower the lowercase version of teaching. I've been coalesced into teach. So this way, I am using the stem if it's available and using the word if the stem is not available. Now, we don't actually have to worry about stop words because stop words have already been removed before we created the inverted index. So it's never going to find a stop word. Stop words will just, they're just, they're, they're as if they never, we didn't pull them out of the documents in the first place. Well, we pulled them out of the documents, but then we didn't put them in the index. So that's how stop words work. They just block things. And so if we want to do the stem in some queries, we can just do a select from the docs, join through the docs gen, where the keyword is, and then this coalesce statement to do the stem lookup and prefer, prefer of the stem. And so we find three rows. Um, we find three rows that match the oops. And if we do the other one with select um, select distinct ID doc where the keyword is the coalescent of the, the stem for teaching or teaching itself. In this case, the stem is going to work. And we're going to find the ones that match the teaching stem. But the original documents have the word teaching in them and teaches. And so that way, we looked for teaching, but we also found teaches. And that's because we stemmed them down to the same word in our index. And then we reconstituted it all because we're looking at the original documents not the post stem documents. Okay? The technical term for converting stems, search terms to their stems is called conflation. I've always wanted to use that in a sentence. So, I hope this has been helpful to you in understanding how stemming and stop words work when building natural language inverse indexes.